how to have a strong relationship with God because the commitment comes from that a strong relationship with God yesterday I talked about you know knowing for sure there is God and there is heaven so I assume you all believe that and know that there is God and He is real uh, and, to, and today in the sermon I talk about the five things to remember that God everything is in God's hand and uh, no one can run away from Him and then if we have a close relationship with Him and follow Him, obey Him and then serve God then will be blessings but when we don't then there can be destruction and also actually uh, when it's more serious then uh, the person could lose salvation so it makes sense to follow God uh, but humanly speaking we have all kinds of destruction um, because things in the world distract us so how do we how do we uh, stay away from these distractions and how do we maintain a strong motivation um, may I would say is whether we are willing to be crucified with Jesus um, for instance for myself if I find something distract me if I find something distracts me if I find something takes too much of a time even when it's good yeah. I will ask myself okay am I wasting my time uh, what should I do so I basically I want to be crucified with Jesus so that nothing distracts me so that my time is all for God uh, and for ministry of course I I spend time with my wife to build up the relationship uh, but I want to uh, like for instance I don't watch TV except the news uh, my family in Hong Kong they watch TV when eating I, I watch with them and uh, other than that, I don't because it yeah. distract, takes away my time. Yeah. And I, I know that God can give me everything to satisfy my soul. Mm -hmm. So when I look for satisfaction, I don't look for the worldly satisfaction at all. Mm -hmm. Now, not many people can do that. Yeah. For instance, the way I eat, uh, many people cannot eat like that because I eat simple, simple food. Uh, because I want to keep myself healthy that I can serve God longer so I don't eat spicy food oily salty food I don't uh, I try to eat simple natural food so to keep myself healthy because I see God is so precious serving God is so precious and and serving God it's I can bring blessings to so many people and God is so pleased with that so I I put down all these hindrances in my heart I even think of what if one day I'm persecuted you know nowadays uh, you know people know how to torture people I even thought about if one day if I'm tortured if I'm tortured uh, to death what would I do and I, I would still believe that even in the torturing God is in control God can do a number of things he can make the torturing without pain there are people who were beaten beaten and no pain uh, he can you know if God says this is time for me to go go to, go to heaven he can instantly take me to heaven or he can open the door for me and I walk out in front of them so I, I believe God to this extent because I experience miracles all the time so I know he is very real and I know that even when I suffer God knows and God has a way that I have thought through all this all this suffering or things in the world now after my first wife passed away I was um, thinking of not getting married at all that I would um, just go take my luggage and go from one place to another 
to be a missionary. But this is not what God wants me to do because uh, now I discover when I go to that country that I go to very often, the food there is terrible. When I go there for, you know, for a, a half a month, then I will have uh, irritation on the body because the food they use, the material is very uh, poor material, unclean. And so it doesn't work for me really uh, to go into that country and stay there. And God provides me the wife and she, she's working and so financially she's helping me. Yes. That's why I can go to different, different countries. And also I have a program in Hong Kong to train people and these people offer the gift offering and help me to go to different countries. And so God knows your needs and he will open the way even though it seems difficult. At one point I had no money at all. I lost all the money when my first wife was uh, dying that from the sickness that in a process that it used up all the money. But God will open up the way as time goes on. So when you believe that God is good, God is real, God will help you and follow God is the wisest thing to do and, and uh, that is the best that can happen to your life. To follow the perfect plan of God is the best that can happen to you. Then, then you would you know, say, okay, women, money, luxury, all this doesn't matter. But at the same time, God can give you all those things. Yes. It's up to Him. God can give you all these things uh, if you, your heart is for Him. If your heart is for Him, then He'll give you all these things. And I, in my heart, I always see that God is very good. So in my heart, I like God very much. I, I think about all the work of God. For instance, I think about how we have been unfaithful, but yet the Holy Spirit keep talking to us, keep guiding us, keep moving in our heart. Even though we say, no, I cannot do it. God keep working in our heart until we obey. So I see that God is very patient. God is serving us all the time, ministering to us all the time. So I always see this work of God in my life and in all Christians' life. So I... Yeah. God knows our heart. That's very important. God knows our heart. And all the time I think about the good things God is doing. Like how He moves in the heart, keep ministering to us, guiding us, planning each person's life. I, you know, I see that in the Bible. I see that in daily life. I see that in people's life. So I, I'm convinced of all these blessings of God. I'm constantly thinking about it constantly thinking about what God is doing and I'm very appreciative and I like God very much so I can pray for long hours I can pray for long hours that you know uh, you know I if I the point is I have to do a lot of writing that's why I cannot pray 10 hours a day if I don't have to do the writing because I you know that's another commission God has given me to write my teachings so I can give to people. If not for that, I can pray for 10 hours a day. I can just enjoy God. And in the presence of God, God will guide me, speak to me, give me strength, and give me strong anointing to bless people, and I enjoy God Himself. I like God very much. So that's something we need to develop. You look at the food, it's God created the food so wonderful for us. You look at godly people, it's God creating the heart in them. It's so beautiful. So I think of God as someone very beautiful, wonderful, powerful, loving, every good things He has. So I have full confidence that God is very good and I, I like Him all the time. I, actually, in your prayer, how can you keep, a long, keep praying for a long time? It's, it's basically, the mentality is, I appreciate God, I like God. Oh, God, you're so wonderful. Oh, you're so wonderful. I like you. I appreciate you. So you, it, you don't have to think of what to say. It's just basically you like God. And then I also pray for, you know, that I will have the fire of the Holy Spirit. I will have the heart of God. I will have the 
passion to love people, to change people, and to serve God. So the presence of God gives me all this motivation. The motivation becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So um, it first comes from God, and then comes from how to put down all these things. Now, one thing about the plan of God, in Psalm 139, verses 16 to 18, Psalm 139, 16 to 18, it talks about that all our days before one of them came to be were written in the book that it's all written down uh, that God already has a plan. God's plan will not be a plan of failure. God's plan is not a plan of, you know, uh, no accomplishment, failure, sadness. God's plan is a wonderful plan, the best thing that can happen to you. And God's plan includes your marriage. Now, as a minister, you need the best woman to be your wife. I mean, if you just choose anyone good looking, uh, attractive, I mean, you choose the woman yourself. You might miss the point because you don't know how she is. And a woman, a pastor's wife, a minister's wife, or a missionary's wife has to have a lot of patience, a lot of uh, love, yeah. support for you, uh, has to have good personality. If you just look at a woman, oh, this one is attractive, oh, it's, it's good looking. It, it not necessarily work out. You won't know who will work out for you. It's God knows. Now, many people think like this. God's plan is boring, painful, difficult. <laughs> and, and think that that way is very difficult. But actually, God's plan is the best that can happen to you. And it's perfect. He will find you the best woman, the perfect woman for you. He will find everything the best for you. He will provide for your need. It doesn't mean you don't have to work. You have to work. Whether you work now, in my ministry, uh, for some years, I worked as a chaplain in a hospital to support my ministry. Sometimes you might have to have a secular job to yeah. pay for your ministry. And then sometimes you don't. It, God can do different things. Yes. Uh, God's provision doesn't mean the money just dropped from heaven. But we know that God's plan is the best. Then what happened is, you don't worry about the woman. You don't think about the woman. You know, like when, as I said, when my first wife passed away, I, I thought of just going to be a missionary and taking my luggage. But then God showed to me that uh, Shirley could be my wife. But I'm not sure whether I heard it correctly. And I took 11 months. You know, she, when I look at her, humanly speaking, she has a lot of good qualities, but I still won't take her right away. I will still take time to ask God for guidance because it's God who knows. My wife can destroy my ministry because if she always nag me, yeah. always say, yeah. you spend so much time going overseas, yeah. Yeah. you have to do all these things, yeah. uh, you don't love me anymore, yeah. then you, you'll be bothered to, you know, you, you, you have no strength. So it has to be someone God provides for you. It, it cannot be someone you choose. So don't choose anyone. Don't just look at a person. You ask God to guide you, and even when someone shows up, don't just take that person. Don't fall in love. You know, many people fall in love to start a marriage. Don't, don't start with falling in love. Start with seeking God's guidance, if this is the person. Fall in love after you find out she's the right person. Now, for many people, this is, un this is unreal. This is like, it's like not going by with feelings. You know, people always think it's feeling that guides you into marriage. Marriage is about feeling, many people think, but that's not true. Christian marriage is about God's plan. You will have feeling. I have a strong feeling. I have strong feelings toward my wife. But to enter marriage is not by feeling. It's not saying she's attractive and all these things. It's not that. It's, it's that she is the person chosen by God. And in that process, I found you know, support evidence. 
and, and after today, I find that she is the right person for me to help me and to love me, and I love her. So I would say, don't. At, actually, at this point, you are still immature. Um, you don't have to get married young, because your your wisdom will increase with time. When you counsel 100 people, counsel 1,000 people, you begin to notice. People have problems. Women have problems. Men have problems. You would, you know, sometimes you look at the beautiful women in the church and say, wow, that beautiful woman would, would, be my, would be a good wife. But when you counsel women, you talk to many women, you gradually find out that they look good on the outside. But the inside, they can be a pain. Yeah. And they can destroy your life. Yeah. So you don't have to plan. We don't have to plan. Where to go, what to do, you don't have to plan. But we, I'll talk about that. We can go into what we can do in front of us. That's because it's already commissioned by God, sent by God. But as far as whether you'll be a missionary, you'll be starting a church, you'll be helping, uh, what will you be doing, that is up to God. The long-term plan is God's planning. You cannot force yourself into it. It's God's planning. So the first thing you need to learn is, number one, God is good. God is the best. God is the best that can happen to me. God's plan is the best. When we follow God's plan perfectly, then your life will be perfect. Any time you are not following God's plan, any area you are not following God's plan, you will suffer in that area. For instance, you love God very much, you pray a lot, and you get someone, a woman in the church, and you think that is really a good woman, but that woman gives you pain or suffering, even a little bit. You will suffer. You will suffer. You will suffer in the area you did not obey God. In that one area you did not obey God, you will suffer from that. So that's something we need to, that's something we need to learn to know any areas, even 1% disobedience. The 1% can bring destruction. The destruction is not 1%. 1% disobedience, the destruction can be 50%. Because this disobedience, any disobedience will bring destruction. And, and some people, 1% disobedience can bring about... I've seen ministers who are very powerful. Yeah. They lose their position as a minister when they sin when they go into women problems. So that's one area you need to watch out. Because, um, uh, because women like to cling to people. They, they need a sense of security. Now, women and men go into relationship for different reasons. Women want to cling to someone. Men want to possess someone, own someone, have fun with someone. It's different. Men want to have fun. Mm -hmm. Women want to want someone to protect her. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you minister to someone, to a woman, that woman will say, "Wow, this minister is so loving, so caring. I like her, him to be my husband mm -hmm. or yeah. to be my boyfriend." Yeah. Yeah. And they will hold on to you. Yeah. And you might say, "Wow, I'm so attractive. The women like me." Mm -hmm. But if it's, if she's not from God. Yeah. Yeah. She will bring pain to you. And I've seen ministers who are very powerful, who are leaders of denominations. I know two pastors who are the leader of the denomination. They lose the position and the ministry when they have problem with women. And so it's, it's something very, very real. And mainly is to believe God's plan is the best. So, believe God is good, His plan is the best, I just trust in Him, have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him in every area, and then your life will go better and better. Okay. Now, what should you do at this point? What you should do is what you can do in front of you. The Great Commission is already given to us. You don't have to wait for God to tell you from heaven, go and preach the gospel. It's already given to us. You don't have to wait for a voice from heaven to go and cast out demons because it's Jesus already said, you know, miracles will follow those who believe, who believe and you cast out demons in Jesus' name. So 
that's something you don't have to ask for permission. You just do it when you see it. When you see people in need, when you see people in a church, the people in a church are the best target for you to help them grow spiritually. Now, if it is a single woman or a woman who is not having a good marriage, uh, or any other woman, you, if you do counseling, it's better that you do it with another person. Counsel that woman together with someone. But watch out, be very careful with women who are single, who are lonely, yeah. who just had a divorce, those are dangerous. Yeah. Um, so if you, in a church, have more care, when you see who are in the church, who are steady, who are strong, even the steady Christians need help. Yeah. So you can care about them and ask them how you are, uh, how's your uh, relationship with God, how's your relationship in the family, and find out and then care about them and counsel them and pray for them. And then you can strengthen them because there are a number of things that can hold people in a church. One is the direction of the church. Another is the care of the ministers in the, in the church, the care of the people. It will help. It will make people feel a sense of belonging, feel cared for, and then they will stay in the church. And also the church can grow. You know, gradually, not only do you help them, after you help them, you take them as a group to serve God together. Like for the next few days, if you can go with me to the school, you can watch me minister and see how God can work. Last year I went, the principal was totally revived. She experienced the Holy Spirit to a very powerful degree. And there were some teachers who were revived, and, and many students said that they experienced the Holy Spirit. And this is all very encouraging, that you can see how powerful God is. So when you see how people minister, uh, who are uh, experienced in it, it will help you. And you try to do it. So if you have time to follow me, and then try to do it, you, say, you see it's not so hard. In Hong Kong, there are people who follow me to do ministry. And gradually they can do it themselves. They can counsel and they can pray for people. They can do deliverance. They can do healing, different things. And then they find out that it's not so difficult and you will find out that. So do what you can do. And the ones you can do most, the best, are the people who are already coming to the church. Help them, strengthen them. And then the most needy one in the church are those who are not steady yet, who are weak. And, but then you don't want to keep them too much pressure. You want to give them care, concern. And also train other people to care for them. The whole church caring, then the church can keep people. That's very important. And then, um, gradually you find out who are willing to serve God. Then you train them, you lead them, take them to visit together and, and take them to help care about the people together. That way they become, they become interested in serving God and that way they will get committed to the church. So when you do this, uh, when you help individuals, gradually you can preach to a whole group. <coughs> How we can preach to a whole group, it comes all come from helping individuals. When we help individuals, then you get used to helping people spiritually. Then you know how people are spiritually, and then you can help more people. So it starts with helping individuals, caring for individuals, seeing each individual as very precious, very important, and then training them to help other people, and raising up people. It, in a ministry, it's most important uh, people are the people who are willing to serve God. So these people, if anyone is willing to serve God, pay attention to them. Lead them along, take them along to serve God, and then they will, uh, they will become the pillars of the church. They will become important people in the church.